All right, so before we get started, we're going to want to clean everything exceptionally well. I like this Be Bright Cleanser. It's pretty much what I use almost exclusively, and it works, to me, I believe, excellent. It's very similar to OxyClean. Anything that touches the wine needs to be thoroughly cleaned, so we're going to need a long-handled spoon for this step. Our primary fermenter, which is basically a food-safe plastic bucket um, that is big enough to hold our wine, so it has to be over six gallons, so there's seven point, I think, eight gallons. And make sure I clean every single piece of this, including the lid and the underside, and make sure anything that touches the wine is immaculately clean. Technically, for primary fermentation, you don't need to snap the lid on, but I do anyway because I don't want any fruit flies or anything like that getting into the wine. So I also am going to be using an airlock, so I'm going to clean that out as well. And this is one pictured, and they come in multiple types. We're going to also need to uh, clean our um, hydrometer, because we're going to need to take readings of what our starting specific gravity is in the winemaking process. If your um, primary fermenter is equipped with a spigot, you want to make sure it is shut off completely uh, so that when you start mixing things up, you don't have wine spilling out all over your floor. Now, if you're just starting out and don't have any equipment whatsoever, it might make sense to get a winemaking equipment kit. And this is stuff that you would buy once and use over and over again. And it would have many of the things that you would need uh, for your home winemaking hobby. Might make sense. All right, guys, we're ready to rock and roll with the Fontana Merlot kit. Um, why do you see two buckets? Well, there's a Fontana kit, and that is a wine expert Pinot Noir. Now, you saw me make the e Eclipse Pinot Noir before, and I have another one, so I figured while I'm making wine, I might as well make two different ones. Uh, but this video is going to be about the Fontana kit and uh, if you wanted to see my other video on the Eclipse Pinot Noir I have uh, a different video that I've already made one this is another one that I'm making because I like that one quite a bit so for the Fontana kit um, one of the things I wanted to show you guys is the size of the concentrate bag. This is a smaller bag as compared to that bag. Um, obviously different type of wine kit. Uh, this is an economy wine kit which we're going to try to make into a great wine by modifying the instructions. Um, I've never made this one before so you know, uh, you guys interested in doing this, I would say, you know, wait to see how this turns out with me before going ahead doing this. Um, but I've made so many wine kits before that, you know, I kind of have an idea in my head what I want to do after seeing what comes with it. So, first thing I'm doing is I have a pail that is filled probably about two gallons uh, in this one in clean and sanitized pails um, but that's filled with some warm water all right so the first thing I'm going to do is I am going to set up the camera so that you can see this all right so the first thing I'm doing is I'm taking a packet that is marked A it's bentonite, which is a clay. And I'm going to tear this packet and I'm going to pour it in. But the key here is to pour it in slowly and stir as you're going. You don't want to just dump it all in because you'll end up with a lump of clay at the bottom. All right. 
So that looks pretty good. So the bentonite addition is finished. The next thing I'm going to do is I'm going to pour out the grape juice concentrate. Now, I've had a few questions on how do I do that. Um, I just want to show you. I'll move the camera a little bit. Now you guys have seen me use a different tool before to take the cap off. And you've heard me talk about, oh, you can do it with a pliers. See that? Works perfectly fine instead of that tool. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to open up this pliers to about as far as they'll go. Put it on there. And just easily just rips the cap off like that. Way easier than that other tool that I use. So I don't know why I continue to use the other tool. But the plier works perfectly fine. And what you do next is you would take the concentrate and pour it in. And try to get as much of the concentrate out as you can. And when you're done with that, you're still concentrating this bag, right? Let me zoom out. Still concentrating the bag. So, what I'm going to do is fill this bag up with some warm water and swash it around a little bit. And I'm going to pour that in. I'm going to have a paper towel handy to clean up any mess that got on here. As it's splashed. And I'm going to keep doing that until I get up to around the five gallon mark. I can tell you that this concentrate and uh, grape juice smells really nice. A little bit more to hit the five gallon mark. And what I'm going to do now is stir this like crazy. Now it's really important to stir this well because the concentrate is very thick and the water by contrast is very thin. 
and the whole idea is to get a uniform consistency throughout the whole thing. Also, I like to stir some oxygen in, which is what I'm doing now. So do like a really, really good stir on that. I know you guys are saying, well, the kit says six gallons. Why are you only putting in five? And like the Vino Italiano kits, one of the things I figure is I want to take a reading and see where my sugar is before I do the full six gallons. So I have my trusty hydrometer. I have to rinse off the sitting and sanitizing solution. I'm going to take that, throw it in, and see what my reading is. All right, so my reading is at around 1.085, around that area. Um, so with that said, I'm going to leave this at 5 gallons. 0 0.085. Which I can probably squeak about. A twelve and a half percent wine out of this if I leave it at that, which is what I'm gonna do. Back in the sanitizing solution. Alright, so now that that's all stirred up, the very next step is to take my spoon out. and sprinkle my yeast on top. Now the instructions say to make a starter and if you care to do that you certainly can. But what I prefer to do is just take the yeast and sprinkle it like that on top. Clean the top of this with a towel. And I have a lid. I'm just going to wash off before snapping the top on. So I'll be right back. Alright, so the next phase, I'm not even going to stir that yeast in. I'm just going to leave it like that. I'm going to snap lid down and I have an airlock that I'm just going to put in here. Now technically you don't need to snap this down. Um, you don't even need to put a top on. You can put a towel over the top if you want. But I like to snap these kind of things down in this phase um, because let's say you bring a banana into the house and there's a fruit fly on that. You don't want the fruit flies getting into your wine. So um, even though it is wretched February, one of the advantages to making wine with wine kits is that you're able to do this in February and um, make some wine. Out of season. Okay, so I make sure that the lid is on well. And at this point, I'm just going to put this aside. Within two days, I should see some bubbling activity in the top of that airlock. And after that, um, I'm going to let it rip till uh, probably about 10 days. And we'll see the specific gravity reading go down as the sugar is consumed by the yeast and turned into alcohol. Okay, um, 
judge judging on what I'm doing here and what I'm seeing is I'm most likely going to be following the protocol that I used for the Vino Italiano kits so far I'm making this one to five gallons and um, taking it from there I'm most likely going to add extra oak chips which did not come with the, the kit I'm going to add that to the secondary um, I'll decide that when I get there but most likely that's what I'm going to be doing all right, so stay tuned for this exciting new wine kit. Um, my first time ever making this one in particular, and I hope to have some good results for you. I have a feeling it's going to be great, uh, just judging by the smell of the juice and everything and um, how things are going. I think it's going to be a pretty nice wine. But, um, you know... Judging on the specific gravity reading, I definitely would not make this to six gallons like the instructions say. All right. Thanks for watching. All right, everybody. Thank you for watching. I really appreciate it. And if you like what you see, please subscribe to my video channel here on YouTube. And um, definitely check out my blogs, www.cookingitalianrecipes.com with the dashes in the middle. Or um, my other one on winemaking, how to make homemade wine.biz. Thanks for watching. Please subscribe and have an awesome day.